I'm very excited to be presenting the Picture Book of the Year Award because uh, they're my favourite things. I'm very proud of um, Australian children's publishers and how they're continuing to publish beautiful picture books. Um, did you know that the children's book market was saving the book trade last year with sales up by 30% or something like that? Publishers could correct me, but um, publishers continue to do beautiful children's books. Heavens knows where the sales have gone with the release of Andy Griffith's latest Treehouse book last week um, because the bestseller of all time, I think. Anyway, I'm announcing the shortlist for the Picture Book of the Year Award today. Um, and I please want publishers to come up as well when I, when I call the names out. Uh, Trace Bella for River Time, published by Alna Nunglin. <laughs> and My Two Blankets, illustrated by Freya Blackwood, text by Irina Cabold. Published by Little Hair. And One Minute Silence. Illustrated by Michael Camilleri. Text by David Metzenthon. Anybody here? Oh, yes, come on. <laughs> Published by Alan and Unwin. The Duck and the Darklings. Illustrated by Stephen Michael King. Come on. <laughs> Text by Glenda Millard and published by Alan and Unwin. And we're over here. <laughs> we're going to have a party here. <laughs> and The Stone Lion, illustrated by Ritva Vatilla. Text by Margaret Wilde, published by Little Hair. And Fire, illustrated by Bruce Watley, text by Jackie French, published by Scholastic. <laughs> and drum roll. The honour books are One Minute Silence. Text by David Metzenson, illustrated by Michael Camilleri, and published by Alan and Unwin. And who you are. I can take that. They stuck these envelopes up very carefully. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the second honour book <laughs> is The Stone Lion. Sorry about that. The winner book is My Two Blankets. This is Irina's son, Nicholas. <laughs> Hello, how is everyone? <laughs> um, I've come down here on pretty short notice. I think Mum got on to me Wednesday last week. 
But um, yeah, I just like to say how proud me and my brothers are of her. And she's sort of stuck with this for a while. I think it took four years to get a publisher. It took four years for her to find a publisher for this book. And um, yeah, she's just done really well and I really can't believe I'm here. And <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank you. Hi, I've got Irina's formal um, speech here. Irina's in, where is she now? She's done a grand world she's tour. She's Canada. She's Canada. Yeah, she's been in Cuba. She's been everywhere. She's been in Russia, Finland. Um, so this is what, um, if what Irina would say if she was here. Languages are mental gym gymnastics. The more we stretch, the more we can exercise our mind. The more complex a language, the more challenging its acquisition. Many of us never have to experience this process, lucky them. Some of us choose it for the mental exercise, others are forced into it because of personal circumstances. Whatever the situation may be, I personally believe that only when we communicate from the heart can we understand each other and reach each other. Cartwheel, who is the anonymous girl in My Two Blankets, does exactly that. She speaks from the heart, simply, profoundly and eloquently. As a result of this, she touches other hearts, the hearts of people in many countries and cultures. Irina, I'll just interrupt myself here. Irina has been promoting her book through all these places where she's been on the world tour and she has been getting some absolutely fantastic um, responses. So Cartwheel, the girl called Cartwheel, talks of loneliness and isolation and she talks of sadness and fear, but she also talks of hope and curiosity and of friendship and the future. We all, no matter how young or how old, have experienced these emotions in our lives and we can identify with her. She speaks to us and she touches our hearts. I, as in Irina, am eternally grateful for having experienced these emotions myself, sometimes under the most obscure, unimaginable and extreme circumstances in my own life. Otherwise, I could not have written this story. Life does not always give us what we want or what we expect, but how boring. Those are the times when we start making new blankets, be they in the form of a new relationship or a new job or a new language. New friends appear and they help. Irene is talking about the theme of her book here. Um, the work of weaving the new blanket, though, has to be done by ourselves. Nobody can do it for us and it can be painful and scary, one step and one word at a time. And then comes the time to reflect and give thanks. I am eternally grateful to my darling daughter, Anna, who met the real cartwheel and who inspired me to write the original story. I am grateful to her brothers, Nicholas, Sasha and Matthias, who kept out of my hair while I was doing so. <laughs> I am grateful to all the staff at Little Hair and Hardy Grant Egmont, especially Margreta Lamond and Alison O'Brien, who were the literary midwives for my first paper baby. I am grateful to all my wonderful friends in Australia, Europe, Canada and the US who have been taken such a great interest in My Two Blankets and helped bring it to where it is today. The most special thanks though must go to Freya Blackwood because of her superb skills in portraying Cartwheel and her story in such exquisite colours, shapes and forms. Thank you Freya for hearing Cartwheel, for bringing her to life and to our hearts. May many more hearts be touched by her story. Thank you. Sorry, I just pull myself together. <laughs> I'll be very quick. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> sorry, I feel exceedingly lucky. Um, sorry. You wouldn't know to, <laughs> to look at me. <laughs> I feel exceedingly lucky to be in a role where I get offered a range of manuscripts. And I don't have the knowledge or the experience or the skills to tell stories like My Two Blankets. But I'm so proud that I'm able to contribute to the creation of a book like this one. Um, and that's the beauty of collaborations for me, is it's the pooling of skills to create something that's just so much bigger than you could do alone. I feel that when Irina wrote My Two Blankets, she created a very positive and special contribution to society, something that seems very hard to do. Alison O'Brien at Little Hair Books 
recognised the importance of the story and petitioned for this story to be made into a book. As you were saying, it took so long. Um, and it is to her, firstly, that I am very grateful that she not only saw its value and possibilities but really campaigned for it. Um, the story required several visual translations or interpretations from, from me and like the blanket of words and sounds. And I'm grateful, as always, to Margreta Lamond um, of Little Hair Books, who in her elegantly intelligent way gently coaxed me through the process and helped me find a solution. Luke Kelly did such a wonderful job of interpreting his design brief and brought together my illustrations and created a beautiful and subtle cover. Thank you to Luke. So I believe that between us we created something really special. And I feel it also really resonated with people and as Irina's trip around the world is showing, lots of people are really feeling a lot about the book. <laughs> I found it interesting to hear the different responses and interpretations um, to this book. And I guess the main subject of the book is learning and understanding language and its power to bring about belonging, uh, seen in Cartwheel's story. Because I haven't learned another language, what I've found, what I've gained from the story um, is that of her friend. Um, and her friend reminds us simply to be kind. And this book isn't just for refugees or migrants or anyone who is adjusting to a new country or way of life. It isn't just for children. It works for any reader of any age and it reminds us, regardless of race or language or religion, that tolerance, acceptance and kindness can change lives and ultimately societies. I'm really certain of anything, but I do know I made the right decision to illustrate this book and I'm fairly certain I found a visual representation that people can understand. Even though I'm certain the amazing books in this, they're all standing behind me, <laughs> in this category, and they're very impressive and beautiful and a lovely grey all over when you see them all together. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I'm sure they all, I'm certain they all deserve to win this award too, but I'm so unbelievably proud that My Two Blankets has won this award. I can't contain my enormous gratitude that it was our book that won this for this year. Um, now, I'll, be, I'll just try and quickly. In the audience today is Ivy and my parents, Katie and Johnny. Um, thank you to my very weird and extraordinary parents. <laughs> <laughs> who drove from Orange to Melbourne with nine massive cow hides in their car to be tanned. <laughs> your upbringing, no, my upbringing, <laughs> and your part in my upbringing <laughs> is intrinsic to my work. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Look. Um, and look, to the Children's Book Council of Australia, this award, the Picture Book of the Year Award, is something that I've always seen as a towering, or it's a way up high that I've looked up to since I was probably a child. And the previous winners of this award are illustrators I have such enormous respect for, and I can't even speak coherently around them. Um, so this is a really remarkable and pivotal moment in my life that the judges have awarded my two blankets this award. I'm honoured and absolutely exhilarated. Thank you. Thank you.